All right, I'm officially adding BMW to my list of car companies that are doing a pretty good job of electrifying their lineups. BMW's had their i3, of course, for a while. i8, their hybrid's been around, but now the i4, the i7, and this is the iX, their crossover SUV. Its biggest sin is just being ugly. I promise, that's the worst thing about this car. Uh, it is expensive too, it's $85,000, so that's where you start to get into the luxury price range and you really start to think about, what exactly am I paying for here? But as far as fundamentals, oh wow, there's a lot of angles of this that look not amazing. But, you know, it might grow on you, but they've got the fundamentals, they've got a lot of space, they've got luxury, they've got features. Let's look inside. Well, actually, let's walk around the outside real quick because I want to point out some things. Um, I'm, tr I'm gonna try not to call it ugly at every turn, I promise. Okay, let's just get into the fundamentals here. So right up at the front, you've got BMW logo, a little bit of fake arrow, a little inlet, whatever going on here, but that's a grill. I mean, a fake grill. It's just plastic, but it's got this sort of a chrome bronze action going on around both the inside and outside of the car that we'll see a bit more. Obviously, these EVs are supposed to be aerodynamic, I'll say this is not one of those EVs that's designed from the ground up to be fully electric. There is no huge front trunk. There is no like cavernous extra space in here, but they have done a good job tailoring some of the stuff. So here's the EV wheels. I I don't think they're pretty. That's one way of saying it. Uh, you again have this trim all the way along the side here. These door handles are kind of nice. You kind of pop your hand in there. We'll go in in a second. There's the back. This is the charge port fundamentals are pretty good it's got both ac and dc fast charging i think it's a little over 200 kilowatts which is pretty decent and this x drive 50 will go about 300 full miles on a charge and that's pretty accurate it is surprisingly efficient to go 300 miles on the size of battery that this is huge bmw logo on the back big slot lights here these are like a little bit indented a little but very bright very large, pretty distinctive look from the back. I, I don't mind it. <laughs> and then again, you get this trim around here, this bronze, and then you've got that shape of an SUV with a lot of space and the hatchback look. I'm gonna open this back trunk just so you can see the way this opens. It kind of reminds me of the Lucid here. So you get your little opener right there. It's automatic power opening. And this is a big slanted opening, like a clamshell type action here. And then you've got your space. Now again, not a ton of space, but here's your sub trunk. That's useful for things not sliding around. And then this is a pretty decent amount of space, not as much as I would expect. Useful, good trunk. I'm happy to report there is also power folding seats so you can put the seats down here really easily. And there is a light in the trunk, so that's cool. For the price, being able to put almost a full on bicycle in there, that's pretty nice. But generally, for 85 plus thousand dollars, you know, that's the type of thing you're expecting. It's also a BMW, so they've got a bunch of other vehicles to compare this to. Again, fundamentals are fine. It's just really only one sin. There's really only one sin here. Look, the aesthetic for me was like, okay, at first I looked at it and I was like, okay, yeah, that's ugly. Now, slowly it started to grow on me. Like I've had it for a week, I've been driving it. I do appreciate the lights, really, honestly. They are very bright. It's got these LED lights in here. And so I, I appreciate that it's bright and visible on the road and all of that is nice. So I, it was slowly starting to grow on me a little, but it's still, I don't know. There's gonna be some people I guarantee in the comments who are like, that is sleek, that's hot, that looks good. Um, I just see nostrils or, or teeth maybe. But luckily you don't have to look at the outside of your own car very often. You spend most of your time actually inside it. So let's look inside. Again, it's got this, this bronze trim. You get inside like that. And uh, one weird observation is I don't like the sound of closing a door, so I'll let you hear it. Didn't it kind of sound like a bit of a rattle there? It's weird. Anyway, there's a strip light here, LEDs. And then you get into the cockpit of IX X Drive 50, and there is a lot going on. Oh my God, music. So uh, this is a pretty comfortable interior, I must say, except for one weird choice. So basically it's got this really large steering wheel with a semi-interesting shape, but the leather is really soft. The stitching is nice. You've got this leather material over here, fabric here, leather, fabric, not as much plastic as the, the previous vehicle. You can see a lot of glass. And then there's a little bit more interesting material choices. Uh, visually cool 
functionally, uh, I'll get there. Uh, but again, you know, I'm still sticking in the camp of not the prettiest thing in the world, but quite comfortable. This has armrests. Obviously, this is a this is a heated steering wheel. But also, when you turn that on, this armrest heats up, and this armrest heats up. So you kind of just sit back, and everything around you, the seat is heated. It's just a nice, comfortable interior. But the one thing is this this little plastic insert here with a shorter passenger. I mean, five eight and under. That's just like the back of your head. It's kind of a weird spot. I mean, the rest of it is nice. It's it's heated. It's leather. It's soft. I just thought that was kind of odd. But generally, you know, I haven't driven a ton of other BMWs, but I do like this sort of a floating display look they've got going on here with the displays in the middle. One display behind the steering wheel, the other display over to the right, both very visible. This line sort of bisects the two, which is, it's well thought out and it looks good. And then from there, the software, decently intuitive. Now, control-wise, we've talked about this in some other cars before. Ugh. I don't know about this whole crystal thing. Like some people are gonna, again, think it's really neat. And it sometimes even reflects like some lights around the rest of the cabin when like the sunlight shines on it. I might say it's a little bit tacky. It does work functionally, it's fine. Gets your seats in the right place, great. That's your unlock, that's your door open, unlock and lock. Um, but this here is uh, much prettier than it is functional. So you've got these buttons that you can see here, this home. This is a knob that can go left, right, up, down, and it is your way of controlling and scrolling on this screen here. But it is also a touchscreen. And this volume knob, it works, but then also these buttons being haptic are particularly slow. Like this haptic response is supposed to give it the feeling of a button, but I don't like how slow it is to respond and it really doesn't feel like a button. So every time you want to press any of those buttons, you got to look down, you got to make sure you hit the right button. Uh, just a little bit quirky, a little, maybe a little too quirky from BMW. Maybe real buttons with defined surface areas would have been cool here because these are useful buttons. You get your parking cameras, which you do get a full 360 view and a top down. You have your driving modes, which is both sport or efficient or your own personal, which lets you jump in and of course change all the settings. Of course I have to actually be on to do that. There's an on button in this EV, which is, eh, they all kind of are starting to do that, which is annoying, but that's fine. But then this ends up being a lot of your other controls and then HVAC controls are only two real buttons and then the rest are all on the touch screen. We've talked about this, we've talked about this. Obviously having real event controls is nice and fan open and close is nice, but Everything else here, again, it's comfortable having the different levels of heat from the steering wheel and from the armrests and all that. Uh, cool, but not ideal while driving to have to do a lot on the touchscreen. And before I forget, let me show you a couple other things. First of all, uh, most other cars, when I open the door, they turn the music volume down. This one doesn't, which I thought that was kind of weird that that was missing. But let's jump in the back seat real quick so I can show you behind a 6-3 driving position. I feel like your feet are kind of high off the ground, but there is a good amount of space. And boom, two USB-C ports and whatever you want to put in there. So that's good for charging phones. That's on both sides. You also get all these controls here. And of course, your feet are going to be heated. The ventilation in the back is good to see. Lots of high quality leather. So this is a good passenger experience. Also with this gigantic sunroof overhead, it doesn't open and close, but still cool to see. I do feel a little bit lower than I expected, but that's fine. Also don't want to forget that in here, there is a cup holder in the armrest. No fancy wireless charger or tablet or anything, but you have that option. And of course your lights up here. What do people put in these folders? Manila envelopes? Okay, anyway, uh, back to the front. Let's talk a little bit more about actually owning and driving the iX50. So, you may, weird sound. You may or may not already know about the uh, M60 version, which is a little bit less range, like 270 miles, but a little bit more power, so up to 600 horsepower instead of 500. But this is plenty fast in a straight line. It's good for, you know, a four second zero to 60. I think it traps 112 and a quarter mile, which is electronically limited top speed, but you know, it has a surprising amount of get up and go in a straight line, but that's not really what it's about. It's much more of that luxury drive, which is what you'd expect from the big 
SUV with the big battery pack and the heated armrests are all, they're already warming up for me now, which is cool. Um, so that's kind of how I feel about most of the way this drives. A couple other notes though, it does have rear wheel steer and I didn't even know that before I got in and I started driving and I was turning around in a tight parking spot and you notice when that tight turning radius is like super clean, you can get into any spot. Love that. So it has the rear wheel steer and it just has this very light steering. So the whole thing, very maneuverable and easy, doesn't feel particularly sporty and that's fine. And then they also actually kind of do a couple, oh look, there's the light from the crystal hitting my leg here. It's just a fun, weird thing that happens when you've got crystals in a car. Um, it does make a couple choices that are sort of mimicking regular gas powered cars more. One of them is that yes, there is regen braking when you take your foot off the, the brake pedal or the accelerator, take your foot off, it starts to slow down, but the regen doesn't go all the way to zero miles an hour. It'll go to like six miles an hour and then you're coasting. So you still have to hit the brake pedal to get to zero. I wish there was a one pedal drive setting. I haven't been able to find it. Maybe I'm not looking hard enough, but that's something they've chosen. And also a little bit of a latency between when I hit the pedal and the acceleration actually starts. This I thought was a little odd. Uh, smacking the pedal, just flooring it, there's actually a tiny delay before it starts sending you forward. Something, it feels like almost the same amount of lag as, you know, a kick down and an engine shifting gears to hit the right RPMs. It's, it's kind of weird. Um, then it gets up and goes, which is fine, but it's, it's very approachable if you've driven a lot of gas cars before. And then it does have wireless Android Auto, which I use, and CarPlay, which is great because that means you can put your phone kind of anywhere. It does have this clever spot right here, which kind of seems weird, but there is a pass-through here to some plugs, USB-C down here. So if you do still want to keep your phone up here, even while wireless car playing or Android autoing, you can route up a cable, which I thought that was pretty clever. But this is also a wireless charger, which is cool to see. It is in a kind of an awkward place to fumble and put your phone, but hey, you can do that if you want to. I just like that that wirelessly transmits thumbs up there. The speakers in this car, which are by Harman Kardon, are very solid and get very loud. You can do volume control on the steering wheel here or by this little knob. It's a little bass heavy and light on treble by default, but there's an EQ setting and you can go crazy with it and it sounds really good after that. Oh, I also wanted to mention there are uh, gesture controls. Let me know if you think this is gimmicky. I kind of have my feeling already, but you can see I'm playing a song and then I, I do that and it goes to the next song and do that and it goes to the previous song or the beginning of that song but here's another one here you just do this and volume can turn up and down uh, i mean it's clearly gimmicky you you have this next song and previous song and volume control here on the steering wheel you also have this laggy next song and previous song and volume controls here so uh i wouldn't really worry about this too much even though it is Maybe something they felt that they could pump this. I think, is it maybe this camera right here? I'm not actually sure which camera is looking for those gesture controls, but actually it's probably this one. It's probably the one right above me. Yeah, it kind of works, but it's a, it's a gimmick. But honestly, you know, I've gone through a lot of things about this car. The range is solid. The space is solid. The fundamentals are solid. It's comfortable generally, unless you're too short and in the passenger seat. There's a lot going for it. I think my biggest complaint is I don't think it looks great. So, I mean, there are other competitors in this area. You look at the price tag, eighty dollars to $90,000, and you could easily go get Tesla Model X. You could easily go get Rivian R1S. You could get a Genesis GV60. There's a bunch of other stuff uh, that all hit different strengths in different ways. So I would say you could get this one if you're a fan of BMW, you're a fan of comfort, light steering, relaxed ride, surprising amount of straight line power, and 300 miles of range is good enough for you. Which, there are others that do the same stuff, but some people are just diehard BMW people, and they like this. So yeah, that's it for my thoughts on the iX. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you think. Catch you in the next one. Peace.